made it to uh, the information desk. This place is closed. Uh, it is 5.30 and it won't open until like 7 a.m. So that means that I'm gonna miss my 5.50 ferry. Yeah, they open around 7 o'clock, so I'm looking at the 7.40 or 9.10. Plus it's a change in time zone, so it's looking pretty grim today. I don't know if I can make it to uh, Likis because I have to walk 32 kilometers. That would be nine hours. That means that I'm gonna be getting there just as the sun is setting. We'll see. Gotta stay positive, right? I had some coffee and uh, right now I'm here uploading pictures to, uh, to Facebook, so. Like clockwork, they open at seven. I got my ticket. I also have breakfast. Uh, I had orange juice, uh, chips, and a uh, chicken sandwich. Now I'm waiting for the bus to take us to, to the ferry, which leaves at 8, 8.20. So exciting. I'm done with the pound, moving on to the, to the euro. We took the bus, went through uh, customs. They had to check all our bags. It was funny because we had to like being in the bus, go to the window and hand over our passports to get a stamp by an immigration officer and then go through security. And, uh, and now we're on the ferry. I seem to be the, the only guy on deck eight. Well guys, from now on, I'll be speaking the kings only to you guys and to, uh, to Google Translate. I'm crossing the, the English channel leaving uh, England behind and entering France. New territory for me. Uh, sorry if I butchered the language, but I don't speak French. <laughs> the ride is gonna be about two and a half hours. So I'm just gonna explore the ferry. See what else they have here. This is it guys. I feel like everything up to this point is just prelude and ahead of me lies the adventure of a lifetime. As I cross the English Channel, the anticipation builds up in me. It's gonna take 30 days to cross France. There will be a lot of ups and downs, but I'm sure I'm gonna enjoy the journey. I finally reached Calais just in time for lunch. Goodbye, England, and welcome to the land of the Franks. Man, I feel out of place. Uh, just made it to Calais. Sorry if I'm butchering the language. Uh, here's a map. I need to find uh, an ATM to get some euros because uh, as of this moment, I have no money on me. By the way, Crossing over the channel, it wasn't a, a two hour and a half ride plus the hour change. It's only an hour and a half and an hour change. So it is actually right now 11 in the morning. It is not so bad. I think I have, uh, I'm doing good time, 11.30. And uh, yeah, half an hour to make it to the center of town. So I just had uh, my first interaction with the locals. I went to a cafe, ordered uh, a chicken sandwich and a soda, and I also got a half a baguette for the way. Took out some cash at an ATM, so I'm fully charged. I'm just uh, running a little bit late. So, might not get to spend that much time here. I thought about going around and visiting some of the places, but I, I have a place to be tonight. Instead of following the coast to Wissant and then making my way down to Guines, I decided to cut across following the canal to uh, Leeks. This way I was saving two days out of the itinerary. But it would be another 32 kilometer day. So after uh, 45 minutes of uh, trailing this canal, I finally made it out of uh, Calais, or how the French uh, call it. Calais. Calais. So far so good, doing good pace. It is almost uh, 2 p.m. 
if I make it to the next town before four, then everything is all right. If not, then I'll get there at sunset. I'm about to go under the overpass and uh, head out. Beautiful country. These are the French that I've uh, heard so much about. Actually, I'm kidding because I was here last year. Uh, I spent four days in, uh, in Paris before I did a Camino and then in the summer I was hired to do a job so I went to the French Riviera. It was all drone shots. Check it out on the link above. For the last uh, kilometer or so I've been limping. Uh, it feels like the arch of my uh, left foot is starting to to hurt when I you know when I step on it maybe it's because I switch uh, shoes I'm gonna give uh, my boots a try and see if it gets better but uh, it has nothing to do with the weight I uh, I was having the same problem when I was training and that little roller that you see me using for massage that seems to uh, take care of the problem but right now I'm in between two towns uh, this is not the, the right place for this to happen. Yeah, that's a lot better. Feels like the boot is holding my leg. I was trying to switch it up and see if, uh, if I could use the, the running shoes for, uh, for the pavement, for the, for the road. But it seems like it, uh, it backfired on me a little bit there. I will keep walking with these boots until I get to the, to the next town. In the meantime, I'm enjoying a little snack. I'm on a bike path next to the, the canal and this old lady and her granddaughter, I guess, stopped by and in her broken English, she tried to uh, strike a conversation with me about the trolley. Then uh, as the conversation went on, she realized that I was doing the Via Francigena and she told me that she did a Camino de Santiago when she was younger. The leg is doing a lot better. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm walking a lot faster. I think I'm gonna use the, the running shoes uh, for the days where I'm in, in town, just to like walk around. And I'll go back to my boots for when I'm walking on the road. And to think that I almost left them home. It's taking a little break. You know, I just realized that uh, that people are driving on the right side of the road. Got me a little confused. I was already used to uh, England, you know, when especially when you're trying to get your direction, your bearings, and you're seeing cars going by. Today it felt a little bit odd, and then uh, and then it just hit me. I took refuge from the sun once again with my umbrella. This time around I was carrying it in my hand. It was a little bit uncomfortable, but I had to make do. Made it to uh, Guinness or Gin. Gin. Looking for a bite to eat and restock on water because uh, temperature is starting to go up. Uh, the weather says that uh, that is 70, but it sure as hell feels like it's uh, 85. So priority right now is water. Just had a Coke at a bar. I uh, had a little moment there <laughs> trying to explain to the lady that I wanted a bottle of water. Turns out that uh, she doesn't sell water, but she gave me some from the tap. And uh, as it turns out, my camel bag it was about halfway there. That's the one thing about camel bags is that you really can't tell how much water you have left. It is four o'clock, so I'm doing good time. According to uh, Google Maps, I should be there in my final destination in two hours. Let's make it three so I can take a couple of pictures. I haven't taken that many today. My feet are doing a lot better. I'm not 100% there, but uh, it's manageable now. I'm still limping just a little bit. Pizza kiosk is, uh, is closed. What a shame. And just on my way out of town, I came across the first uh, Commonwealth uh, War Cemetery. 
It was a true eye-opening experience as I saw the tombstones of about 20 something uh, soldiers from the first and second uh, world war. And then I headed out into the French countryside under the scorching heat of the sun. Thankfully my umbrella kept me away from uh, the, the brunt of it. But it will get hot in the days ahead as the heat wave is about to sweep across Europe. These are the little moments uh, when it's not fun. I'm walking on a very busy country road. I'm walking against traffic, so when I see the cars coming up ahead, I get on, on the side. Just a little nerve wracking, but it's all good. Getting uh, close to uh, Champagne Les Guinness. Pretty sure that's not how you pronounce it. <laughs> There's a little forest up ahead that I've heard about it. It's gonna be good to get out of the sun for a while. Just went inside the church to get a stamp. It's open, but there's no stamp inside. I think that's one of the biggest differences uh, with the Camino de Santiago. Over there you will find a stamp everywhere you go. Bars, churches, albergues, etc. This would have been a perfect place to get one. There's nobody inside. So I um, guess I'm just gonna keep on going. El Camino provides, my friend. I was getting close to leak, and all of a sudden, I stumbled across an oasis in the middle of the road. It's a food truck, a pizza truck, and the guy speaks English. The guy just got back from Miami. He went to Disney World. I mean, and he's only open on Thursdays. What are the odds of that? He gave me a pizza, a bottle of water, and a soda, and he didn't want to charge me. So I left him uh, 10, 10 euros, you know, I had to give the guy something. And now I'm here at a, at a bus stop, the unofficial pilgrim stop in this Camino, because there are not that many places for you to rest. So now I'm enjoying a ham and cheese pizza made in a, in a wooden uh, oven in a food truck sitting in a bus stop in the countryside in France. Couldn't be any more perfect than that. Everything was going so fine and I almost got lost in the woods. <laughs> but I'm out now. I was walking next to the highway I took the detour just as the GPS uh, recommended and after a while I noticed this guy that I'm following actually got lost and so am I now. A left turn and it was a nightmare. I mean, check this out. That was something else. That was like a, like a preview of what's to come in Switzerland. It was like 30 degrees. I kid you not. I think uh, the GPS uh, tracks that I'm following, the guy got lost and he had to do this. Thanks for letting me know, buddy. Let's go now that way. Oh, and I'm also running out of battery. On the camera, on the cell phone, it's eight o'clock. Sunset is uh, 10, so I still got a couple of hours of uh, of sunlight. Pretty bad, right? Well, that was the hardest part. That was the good news. I kept going. Then I realized that uh, at a fork in the road, he went left in instead of making a right turn, which is what I did, had to cross a, a fence and uh, I'm now back on the road. There was a point there when I thought this would be a pretty cool place to camp, but uh, not on my first day of camping. I mean, that's some next level camping <laughs> that I will probably be doing a week or two from now. But today, I need an official campground. And that's gonna take place in the town that I already see up ahead. Wait a second. Did I change clothes? Did it get overcasted? No, it is actually uh, day three. I ran out of battery as I was getting close to, to town and I, I just could not film anymore. So this is the end of the vlog for day two on day three. So see you 
in a little bit.